It's another great Monday Pro League day. Our first match went to an ace match. I'm hoping the second can do the same. I'm Wolf. With me is Moonglade. And we're jumping into Samsung versus CJ. And you know what? I think we could go to another ace match. Looking at this lineup, Wolf, I think it can happen, man. It certainly could. Starting with Deer versus Sky High, that in itself could be a pretty close one. We did see Deer go uh, down to Flash in recent times in his last game. Sky High had a lot of practice against Protoss as well, and you know, he hasn't looked off bad either. Yeah, no, he, he certainly has been looking pretty, pretty strong recently. Um, Deer, I wonder how well he's gonna look today. Reality as well, like. They do have some interesting players, yeah, Reality, Shine, Hurricane as well, you know. Deer. Yeah, all of them. Hurricane probably the the most impressive for Samsung out of today's lineup. Just because he recently destroyed Rogue 3-0 in Star League, which is pretty huge. But that was an incredible series. It's it's like not that relieved that his game he's gonna play today, but like he's gotta be coming off some momentum from that. He would feel good about it. There I mean looking at those games as well, I wasn't too inspired by how Rogue was playing. Like he looked very jet lagged or just unprepared, unfortunately. Hurricane definitely prepared his life out for that series, though, and you know maybe he got a bit lucky because Rogue was not on his game. But if you beat someone like Rogue Trio, even if Rogue is like lost with his hand tied behind his back or something, man, you still got to feel pretty good about that one. Oh man, beating anyone Trio at this level in like a, in a best of five is absolutely amazing, especially when you're the underdog. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But, you know the the danger is there at the very least for Samsung. They have the danger, kind of like how MVP had danger against SKT. SKT clearly was the like the the team that's getting all the wins, doing very well. CJ, even more of the same. Like they, these guys are leading the way. They haven't dropped the match yet. They're looking to further their lead today by a huge margin. Yeah, the matchups that MVP had gave them a few favors where they could have like these crazy upsets because of the matchups and the maps that we saw. This second series has a little bit of that, but just not quite at the same level, I feel. Like, I feel like CJ just has the more solid lineup. They don't have as many, like, like I guess you could say, like, call them danger moments, like like you were saying. Yeah, I mean, Deer versus Sky High, that's probably the biggest danger moment for CJ out of all of them. And Sky High has been playing very well. He's, like, been one of the starters for this team now for the last few weeks. And besides that, I mean, Hurricane versus Beyond, I feel like Beyond should be pretty confident in that one. Yeah. Hero, obviously, going to be confident against anyone from Samsung. And Bial, he's he's obviously worried about a 9 pool, but besides that, he should do just fine. Yeah, Shine uh, is going to really have to make something happen on Expedition Lost. Shine is the type of player who could do tricky builds, do all-ins. The so build just needs to play very safe, and I feel like he should be okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's see how Samsung does today because sometimes they come out with this lineup of players that you look at all those four players and you look at the four players on the right side where on CJ's side and you're like, well, there's no way Samsung wins today, but they just somehow do it. I mean, they're they're top four right now. I mean, they yeah. are they are doing well with these players. They are they are doing it for sure. But this is probably one of their hottest matches of this round. Well, I think it most definitely has to be right. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, CJ just doing so well. CJ is the hardest opponent for everyone this round, as it turns out. Like they are far and above. For anything we've seen in StarCraft 2, the most winning team we've ever seen in a round. Like, they, there has never been a team that's gone this far without t dropping a map. Like, in round one last year, we had uh, SKT almost get that far, but then they lost a weird game to Prime, and everyone was like, what? <laughs> um, that's right. But, you know, CJ is flawless. They had one close call. They had one ace match they went to, but everything else, they've been winning 3-0s, 3-1s. They've been looking really, really good. So damn good. And, yeah. Starting things up with Deer versus Sky High. I'm, we've seen Sky High play. I think we we actually costed a lot of his games at the Hot Six Cup, yeah. where we, we actually got to see Sky High for the I guess the first time, kind of like he, he was really hidden away in that team for a long time, and and he started showing his style. And he obviously loves the bio mind dropping, and not a bad map for it. You know, starting off in merry go round like this, great map for Terran against Protoss. That's for sure. Third bases for Protoss, very hard to take. Absolutely, and, um, a lot of dead air space behind the, the natural and main base for a lot of this kind of dropping. Sure. Um, though keep in mind, Deer really fell to Flash's pressure the last time he played in the PBT matchup we just saw last week. So he's going to have to shake off his nerves from that one because most people favored Deer going into that matchup. Well, he looked like he was doing just fine as well until like he decided to take the fight at his third base and just die. It was kind of really surprising. but I actually like cannot believe I'm the only person who voted for Sky High. I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry, Wolf. This is... This is awkward. I did have the most successful predictions last week, I was told, though. So I'm, like, Whoa, feeling okay right now. Look at you. Look at <laughs> oh, we're, we're on camera. I'm like, yeah, it was me. Uh, I'm like, 
Call me later when uh, the prediction comes through. <laughs> oh, we'll see about that, my <laughs> friend. We'll see about that. Uh, I still think it's a pretty uphill battle for Sky High. Deers, he's still a great player and has done a lot for Samsung, that's for sure. Uh, and yeah, as I was saying before, I think it is the one weak match that you know CJ might have in this uh, in the four lineups we have. Yeah, I just. Uh, I hope Kanata took that to mean that I want to be on his like co uh, Q calling episode. <laughs> like I want him to call me, and uh, and talk to me about how my predictions are always right. Um, they're not always right. I actually <laughs> had the worst ratio until recently, but you know I'm working on it. You're you're getting there. <laughs> you're a step up from last week. That's a the important thing. Sure. Um, I actually I feel like this could be a really close match. This is definitely a hard one to call. Um, I'm just surprised I was the, literally the only person who thought that Sky would take this. Sky is looking great in the TVZ matchup where he's been mecking. So maybe, you know, the Korean commenters, I'm just guessing what they're thinking is possibly that, well, we haven't seen him play this matchup in a while, whereas Deer just played it, has been practicing for it. So maybe he's a little bit more versed in the matchup right now. Well, uh, if you go by statistics alone, Sky High's TVP is his worst by far. Like, it's currently sitting at, like, 47% to the win rate yeah. overall, everything. So, uh I, I definitely agree with that when we have seen his TVZ and his TVT in recent times. His TVT looks amazing, by the way. Yeah. And his TVZ, he's, he's like found his rhythm with TVZ. It's like, well, I'm just doing so well with this mech. He knows how to do it so well. Sure. Yeah. It makes sense that TVP might be the weaker one. He gets less time playing it. And uh, yeah, it's just, it won't suit his style as, as easily as the other matchups. Well, the reason why we haven't started yet appears to be Deer's not in the lobby. Uh, just to give you guys a little heads up on that while we've been kind of talking a little bit here, getting like really deep onto these stats and stuff, is just because. Uh, he just simply hasn't joined the lobby yet, so I'm not sure what the reason behind that is, but we'll be getting an update on that probably, no doubt, very soon. Yep. Oh, we're going to take a look at the prediction percentage oh, now. Wow. Oh, looks like uh, Moonglade and Valdez leading the way. And you guys tied with Monday Caster, in fact. Ooh. And I'm uh, just a hair behind you guys, but ahead of Analyst Daehyun and Kanata, who's now in last place. Ooh, we're doing pretty well for ourselves, you know. Team yeah. Simon staying strong with the percentages. Yep. Need to get it over sixty percent though, Wolf. We gotta get there, man. Yeah. Well, I want to go seventy, man. I want to go deeper. Whoa! I want to get ninety percent, man. Oh. Then I start betting for real. <laughs> start making the money. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, prediction-wise, yeah, you've been at the most consistent. Now you're tied with Valdez and uh, and um, Monday Caster. But like, besides that, you were pretty much always on top, like the whole time. So. Yeah. Well, you did really well uh, last. Last round, right? Yeah, last round I, or last week I got low. Well, last round I was at the top, and then like last week I got like all the pr all but one prediction right, I think. So I, I had a good week. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, man, it's a uh, bit a bit of a competitive sort of thing we have here with the other casters. It's kind of fun. It, it's like not something that stresses me out too much. Like if I were like below thirty, I'd be like, oh. oh. Well, then you're like. Well, clearly something's going wrong. I'm, like, not paying attention <laughs> at all when I do these. It's like I just, like, roll the dice or something. <laughs> I'm like, oops. <laughs> Guess yeah. it was tails this time and it should have been heads. Uh, I don't know. That's a pretty fancy dice you got there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I was never, math was never my strong suit. Um, you, know, you asked Calder as well, and he and I cast together. I was, like, saying all those things, like, 20 plus 20 is 50 or something. I said once on, on Damn, TV, like, dude. I made some mistakes, guys. I don't know. I don't know. Um, well, hopefully this problem gets solved pretty soon. I don't know what other sort of statistics we have. Let's talk about the beta. That sure. disruptor unit's that's too a, strong. That's a fantastic <laughs> kind of time killer. Um, you know, I've been using the stasis ward a lot, and I think it's incredibly strong. Yeah, I haven't actually ran into it yet. Um, I, I've been using it in PvP. You know those charged zealot archon balls become a lot less strong if you turn off the auto cast and you just activate it when the bunch of zealots go in there. Boom! All their zealots can't move, and yeah. then you just wreck the fight. And as soon as the thing wards off, you just kill all their zealots. I've been using uh, that a ton. Okay, I have run into it because that's what it is. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've run into that too. People try and like line up when they uh, come on, come off, and then like the they send in their their uh, disruptors in and try and blow everything up. It's yeah, like super lame. Yeah, well, I just use it against that PVP death ball. I'm like, that's how I stop all these charged zealots and archons. It just like, it just kind of explodes and all those units are stuck and they can't move, they can't run away. And the rest of the army can still move freely and then you kill that because your mm. army didn't get stasis warded. Yeah. And then when the rest of the units get free, then you just kill them. It's like it's like stasis in StarCraft 1, actually. Well, it's like stasis ward in uh, WarCraft 3, if you want to go further back yeah. uh, with the Witch Doctor. But uh, I think there might have been a little bit of a different mechanic, but similar sort of property, except you could actually kill stuff that gets stunned with the stasis ward in uh, WarCraft 3 is messed up, man. Yeah, it's, it's pretty messed up, dude. Very rarely used there, so <laughs> it's okay. Well, uh, there's that. I've been, um, I've been having some not so fun times versus the Cyclone and the uh, PVT matchup. I've heard uh, Protoss is really hate the Cyclone, and uh, I, I've I've had some experiences with it. They're they're good at killing overlords and stuff. But uh, if you get 
get the right units out, you can take care of them pretty quickly. I mean, Ravages and Roaches are pretty much the way to go. Speedlings before then. Yeah. Um, I've been uh, trying to rush Blink Stalkers, uh, but the problem is sometimes when I do that, like when I get countered by other things, if I scout a gas and he denies my scouts, I'm not sure if a cyclone's coming. I gotta keep poking, I gotta keep checking. Mm. But the thing is, if you're poking, you're checking, it is a cyclone. Whatever you're poking and checking with is probably gonna die. Yeah. But then if they just go like cloak bands or something, well, you're like, well, I went blink stalkers and so now I'm yeah, dead. You're dead. Yeah. I haven't tried phoenixes yet. I feel like phoenixes could do okay. I mean, you pick them up, right? Yeah. yeah. That'd be pretty cool. That's what I do against Ravagers because I'm like, you're in the air, you can't cast that ability. <laughs> you're stuck up there. <laughs> what if they, they? What if the other ones use that ability? There, they hit that unit. It hits the unit. So yeah, yeah, and the Phoenixes are stuck while they're lifting. Yeah, I've had some success defending with Phoenixes, but the Ravagers pretty strong too. You probably just want to go Void Rays and just micro hard and, and then go into carriers or something late game, I guess. Yeah. Uh, how have you been faring against carriers? Have you hit the lot? Hit that a lot? I, I had some pretty big games against carriers, and I don't know. It's kind of the similar sort of way you deal with them in in a in normal sort of Heart of the Swarm, you just get Vipers and Corruptors, upgrade yeah. them, and try and pick as much as you can. I guess it's kind of like dealing with um, even Tempest in the late game, you know, you just mm. kind of yank them and get rid of them. They're expensive, they're slow. I mean, yeah. they're not as slow as Tempest, but they're still pretty slow. Yeah, and they still do a... Uh, they're obviously a lot better in uh, Legacy of the Void as well, carries. so it's still it's just like a bit harder. Well, here's Deer. He's 3-2 and two versus Terran. 7-5 and five total stats. He's been pretty inconsistent this round. He's had some incredible games. He's had some off games. Like, he's either on or he's off, this guy. Yeah, uh, pretty disappointing game against Flash in his last match on uh, Vani Research Station, I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, kind of got crushed. Besides that, we haven't really seen him against Terran that often. He did beat Hack and Maru earlier this month in Pro League, which is, you know, absolutely huge, but it has been a while since then. And Sky High Man, a master of TVZ. Historically speaking, even outside of Pro League, uh, this is his worst matchup. He's 1-1 one one in Pro League and 3-3 three and three total. This guy was CJ's big man last uh, last game, I should say, like in StarCraft 1. In StarCraft 2, he's, he's slowly ramping up to be one of the best, uh, you know, Terrans. Yeah, he's, got, he's, he's definitely improving in leaps and bounds, and he's got a bright future on this team. And they keep playing him like in the top four, or like they do in the top three. He's always getting play days these days, man. Clearly something's going really right for Sky High. All right, guys. Game number one. The momentum starts here. Deer versus Sky High. Let's jump into it. Top left in blue. The Very eyebrows. zoomed in. The eyebrow toss. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, dear. Down here at the six. Sky high. Big man on campus. Big man on campus. Yeah, that's the phrase I was looking for earlier. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, lost to Classic in the, uh, the qualifiers for Star League, and then lost to Creator in the Star League wildcard finals. So he has right. had a couple of hiccups in TVP in the most recent of times. Yeah. You know, uh, as you were saying before, his uh, TVP style tends to be, you know, Widowmind based. Um, and when we were seeing him in the Hot Six Cup last year. So see if he continues down this path or if he's uh, He's got something new planned because we haven't seen him like too recently televised playing this match. Like some of the stats you just brought up were like totally offline, and um, mm. and, and that means they're important, but they were still just not broadcast, so we don't know exactly how he was playing in all of those matchups. Yeah, exactly. Bit hidden, but clearly something's gone wrong. I mean, losing the creator of all people, creator showed a lot of trouble in this matchup in recent times as well, especially against Widow Mines. Yeah, that's fairly telling. Um, yeah. Some of Creator's Widow Mine defenses were just like almost non-existent. They, they literally were. And they, like, they, he just lets it happen. He like closes his eyes and like puts his hand off the mouse and keyboard and like spreads his arms like he's flying or something and lets it happen. Then puts his hands behind his head. He just surrenders. Like, like what, I, what I think about that, I was like, you know, at the front of the Titanic when Leonardo DiCaprio is like there with the, the chick, and they like they have their arms out and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think he's doing when, when he's like <laughs> defending against Widowmines, <laughs> and he just loses everything. 
Like, well, that's really dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> the Sid is pretty dangerous, <laughs> pretty for, dangerous. especially for his probes, which is why we see them all blow up. Yeah, well. Let's see. I mean, Deer actually played a pretty pitiful game against Flash uh, as well. It's like both of these guys are, like, just just having a bit of trouble. Um, and I'm not sure what sort of game we're going to see out of Deer because, like I said, he's been very inconsistent. As soon as he got that GSL pin, like that he's wearing on his chest right now there, that, that GSL championship, it's like when he lost all of his powers right <laughs> after that. <laughs> That's when he just he started drinking all the time and pottying and... You know, he, he was happy. He was satisfied. He's like, well, you know, I just didn't need to try anymore. Well, he joined Mao's Sports, and you know, there was some, somewhat of a controversy there. Oh. He seemed very unhappy with the team. He was poorly performing at that time. Well, he was in that for like two months or something, right? Yeah. That was like horrible. Yeah. Horrible for him. He's, he's actually like, honestly, like frankly speaking, very lucky that Samsung decided to give him a chance here. I think it was a good pickup by Samsung as well, but... It was it was he was gonna be hard pressed to find a team. He might have ended up on Prime, you know, if, if Samsung decided they didn't want him. Yeah. So he's he's gonna be happy with then. this. Yeah. yeah, we know what happens then. Then you wow. play League of Legends. Then you play League of Legends. There's Reaper. Looking for what he can. Hanging around mid. Finds oh. the scouting. Play. That's nice. That's a really great pickoff. Um and it is looking like it's gonna be Widow Mines again here. The Stargate coming out for Deer. Not like a rushed one, and it's in base. So we could even see Phoenixes here. Like, he might actually just use Phoenixes to shut down drops, pick up those Widow Mines. Because he knows, clearly, Sky High Style, he probably did some research. Yeah. And uh oh, this is actually... This is actually really uh, dangerous. He's going to have to use SCVs here. He needs and to target that mothership. Okay, he's doing a good job of that. Well, Still not enough, though. He's going to need not. the next two Marines. Wow, this is actually really dangerous. Cannot get surrounded by the, the SCVs there. I feel like this is totally worth it. He's doing a lot of damage with that stalker. He's pulled a lot off. Oh. What? Okay, he paused without saying PP. Bad manner. That's... DQ. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. That's not allowed. You That's actually just literally cannot do that. I wonder what happens then. That's like ruthless. That's a ruthless pause. Unless like he's, he's literally his mouse stopped working or something, which is maybe why his stalker nearly got surrounded. Like, it's like, yo, my mouse just ain't working, bro. Well, we'll get to the bottom of this because... Um, unlike in some other tournaments, like this, in in this, uh, oh, his hockey sub got erased apparently. Whoa. Um, but in in this tournament, we have a referee literally standing behind these players at all times. So like, whatever just happened, like, this, he's not gonna be like, he's not lying. There's no, there's no way to like, like, well, I just paused by this because of this and this and this. Like, the referee can see like if a screen just turned off or something. Like, it's very clear. Yeah, that would actually be okay. Um, what what if you had to type PP if the screen was off as well? Like, wouldn't that be just even it's like, well, you could technically still do it. You should have done it, man. Yeah, you should have done it, bro. You, it's, it's the keyboard still works. <laughs> like, you're done. You're done. It's like, it's like if your keyboard stops working, you just lose because you can't type PP. It's like, well, do I, do I like go to the menu button with my mouse <laughs> and try to hit it? Pause, like, or yeah. He has to like, he has to alt tab into Windows and open up the virtual keyboard and click the PP with the mouse <laughs> <laughs> while the screen is up. Like what? <laughs> It's like how he's supposed to do it. Oh my god. Casper rules. It's like in clause like 37A B part 2. It's like in the case of the keyboard not working, you have to use a virtual keyboard. <laughs> no matter what the circumstances are, if the mouse or keyboard is working, you must get it done. <laughs> oh my god. I could believe it. So, and if that fails, like the guy behind you, like the Casper rev, like punches you in the back of the head <laughs> or something. I don't know. Like, what's the rule behind that? It could be, man. I need to get that handbook. Oh, you like the, gets a ruler out and like slaps your knuckles or something like they wouldn't back in school. It's Flash's ruler too. It's like <laughs> <laughs> the opponent's team's like ruler. It's like Fla if they're playing KT, it's Flash's ruler. If it's like I don't know whose ruler it would be for um uh, for these guys for yeah, Samsung. I don't know. But okay, so let me like because uh, let's uh I guess we could just like, kind of be like take this on a little bit more of a serious tone. I think what's probably gonna happen here is he'll be given a warning. I think that's somewhat fair. It also could be that the game resumes, but the team is, takes a penalty point. Um, because, like, a hotkey setup is usually the player's... His hotkey setup got erased, quote-unquote, is what he claims, right? I don't know if that's even possible, but that's what he claims. The referee will have to decide that for himself. But still, he should have typed PP, and uh, that decision will probably be made later. But we, the game got resumed. We're back in it already. We're back in it. Oh, the recall saves them both. Whoa, that's just that's just awkward, man. I actually, I actually, I don't know what happened with the hotkeys, but if if they can't determine they got erased randomly, I would definitely give a penalty point here. 
He just paused in the middle of the fight and then recalled after the unpause. Yeah. That's that's uh, just that's unfortunate all, overall for Sky High here. Yeah. Definitely. Look, let's just like take like bias and, and theories away. Like this is definitely a good trade for Deer. Like that was insanely good. For oh, him. that was fantastic. I mean, he was still pretty ahead like before the pose even happened there. Like yeah. he, the damage was done. It was definitely was. And he's actually softened up some of these Marines for this Oracle to come in here and maybe do some work. Ooh, not that many Marines. I don't think. We'll find some. Yeah. No turret here either. The Widow Mine's out of position. Where is that? At? Behind the Solid Dish? Oh no, no it's up no, in front. It's, yeah, it's up in front. I think it's about all he's going to find for now. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, there's a Widow Mine there, and there you go. Boom. Sky High, back in it. Back in it right away. That's a huge investment, and he only got one kill, I think? Yeah. I think, yeah, one. Wow. All right. Everything kind of stabilized then at this point. It's all good in the hood. Now, he did scout that it's going to be a Widow Mine drop. He saw that there were two Widow Mines in play, and that the, uh, the Banshee, or rather the uh, Starport is, is naked, so it's, it's going to be a... Uh, not Banshees, I've never seen that in this matchup, but it's going to be a medevac coming out here. But this is what I was talking about with those Phoenixes earlier. Um, Phoenix is a great way to shut this down because not only can you hit the medevac before it can even get to your base, but it can also lift up the Widow Mine en route as well. Mm. I mean, uh, not en route, but as, as it's uh, trying to burrow. Yeah, absolutely. It's very important to be on top of it. you got to be in position for it, which is a scary thing. They're kind of just looking for stuff right now. There could be a drop out there. They're not for sure, but they're going to patrol now. Okay, so they should be in position for it. If a mind drop ever comes, we're going to see a double drop. A uh, double drop is scary, and if he just tries to fight it with Phoenixes, that's a lot of Marines in there. He can actually just ward the Phoenixes away with that. And he, because he doesn't see it, he can't even slow this down. It's actually going right in between two Phoenixes, heading down that middle path here. This could do a ton of damage. Mothership Core does have enough energy. Even though it used to recall earlier, it does have enough energy. It's very low on health, so if he snipes this... There's no way he's going to let that happen. No. But if he snipes it, man. Going to be on the ramp. He has no idea. He could actually intercept it before it gets to the Nexus. Oh, my God. He's got Widow Mines on top of the ramp. And you know what? He oh, does. Oh, he gets it. I can't believe this just happened. That actually just happened. Okay, well, at least the Widow Mines the are Robo neutralized. Well. He's going to get that. Oh, my God. That was just, I mean, frankly, like, very lucky as well. Like, he no, just was yeah. able to avoid all the Observers and the Phoenixes. Well, like, only someone that map hacks could usually do that, but Sky High just playing on another level. Got lucky. Oh, I think Deer just pulls the pot. Well, he's he's losing way too much here. Oh, my God. He actually might just lose the game. He didn't even target the medevacs properly, so both of them got to red before either of them died. And he has no Mothership Core, so, yeah, I mean, I think he's just going to die here. What? Critical, I mean, critical damage. Those Phoenixes are so low. In oh. fact, the Phoenix, there's only one left. He's just going to micro his way back against the Stalker. He should be getting probed. He should it. be. There we go. But yeah. he's massively ahead no matter what at this point. Like, he killed the entire army. He killed the Mothership Claw before Photo Nova Charge. He killed the Robotics Facility. He killed eight probes. He killed the Phoenixes. And that was with two, two Medivacs full of bio to plus two mines. Yeah. Wow. I I've never seen so much damage. Yeah, I, I'm just speechless. It was it was somewhat lucky though. I mean, I I, I have to just like put that on the table. Like I, I call that map hacker's luck. I mean, basically, like he got insanely lucky. There was a ton of different things spread out on the map to scout this, and he literally just happened to go by every single one. In of between them. everything. Like that was insanely lucky. That was insane. All right, and this could very well just end the game. Mothership Core is not going to have enough energy for further overcharge for at least another thirty seconds. Stim is done. Yep. Two stalkers. Mothership two Core not even close to being ready for a photon overcharge. This is a steamroll. I think this may be the weirdest game I have ever commentated. Well, I'm just pretty underwhelmed by Deer. I'm never voting for this guy again. <laughs> well, uh, Kanata's got to call me after this prediction, huh? <laughs> I, yeah, man. I guess I you look, get I it. look like a genius after this lucky yeah, you back drop, man. I like, saw the future, dude. Like clearly, Wolf has given him map hack to this game. <laughs> Well, a big stim on the reinforcements to just kind of keep pushing this forward because he knows there are Colossi coming out, and this army is getting pretty low. He wants to be able to reinforce this really quick. He should probably just lift up and drop on that Colossus, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he's got more bio plus two more Vinimax coming. Like, it's going to be more than enough heal to even just counteract this Colossus. Yeah, just needs a target. There's the Nexus Cannon. The Mothership Core did live long enough to at least do that, but it's not going to be enough. Now we can just go into the main base. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Well. Super Divine is going to help. Solve problems. Nice boost away. That many back. I feel like he should just go into the main, but I guess he does. He can just do whatever he wants. He literally can. Like, 
GG. GG. Wow. What a weird game from the pause to the to the just random luck of those medevacs. I mean, he had two observers and two phoenixes spread out. He did not have the watchtower though, I guess, and that that cost you. If he had the watchtower, he sees that coming. Yeah, he had no idea. He had absolutely no idea, and he just took maximum damage from that. And that's a that's a surprising win for CJ, but. Uh, you know, it's a pretty damn good one at that, because that was probably their closest match. Youngfest, Hurricane up next. Hurricane, probably the better player on this team right now, but he's up against Byung, and Byung is sick in TVP. He's got great TVP. He's got great awareness. He's also just, like, insanely good at his micro. Like, his splitting uh, is, is great against Storms, for example, if it gets to that point, but also even splitting against Colossi, doing, you know, timing pressures and things like that. Um, he's very aggressive, and he doesn't. He plays a style that's similar to Innovation's kind of SCD pull timing type attack, where he does a little bit of damage and, does, and pulls the SCDs and, and, and tries to go for kills. But he doesn't always play like that. Sometimes he also just tries to continue to drop, and he'll he'll be the guy who every now and then take a fourth base in, in this matchup and, and play for the later game and not pull the SCDs. Yeah, that's very true. He's got a lot of variety in his playstyle in this matchup. King Stage on Station. It is a, it's a good map for just about everything, especially dropping there. No doubt, probably want to set the pace on this map. Go for that bio mind drops, which we see from just about every Terran player on this map. It's going to be up to Hurricane to deflect everything with minimizing the damage and you know, hopefully make sure he knows when the drops are coming, unlike our poor friend Deer here. Yeah, Deer is pretty frustrated, and, and who wouldn't be after a loss like that? He's even turned into Solar for some tips. <laughs> Don't want to be doing that, mate. After Zerg, he plays Zerg. <laughs> Solar's been having his own tough times recently. Yeah. Well, that was a weird game. I mean, just everything about it. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I just that's like, not. I want to get that out of my mind. Let's forget about that wolf. Let's go. Let's just focus on Hurricane versus Beyond. Yeah. Let's let's move forward here. Let's move straight forward. We're gonna be jumping straight into this game. King Stage Young Station. Rude. Recently going down to Hurricane 03 in Star League. Only, I guess it was maybe four, three or four days ago, I think. Yeah, just last uh, Friday, in fact. Yeah. 